If you're sculpting in 3D Coat and you're coming from a ZBrush background, one of the first things you're going to want to discover is which brushes in 3D Coat match brushes that you are most accustomed to in ZBrush. One of those is the H Polish brush. So I will try to demonstrate which ones in 3D Coat best match it. In the Sculpt workspace, and assuming that your model is in surface mode, indicated by the S icon on the left side of the layer in the Sculpt Tree hierarchy panel, you will see the Trim Adaptive Brush. If not, there is a tool group that it is part of. Flatten is probably the closest equivalent in 3D Coat, and we will look at that shortly. But let's start with Trim Adaptive first. It serves the same function in 3D Coat as it would if you were sculpting in ZBrush, and that is to essentially flatten and polish beneath your brush. You can see the outer edges of the brush stroke is coarse because the fall off is set to zero currently. And after adjusting that value upward, it's a bit softer around the edges. Okay, I'm going to explore the settings in the tool options panel. We have a flatten modifier and we can increase the intensity degree as we need. If you're trying to create a stroke from one part of the model to the other, and you have a large surface deviation in between, you may want to determine whether or not you want to follow the surface explicitly, or if you want to actually carve through it. The sampling section of the tool options panel is where you would make that distinction. In both the pick trajectory and pick normal list menus, we have a range of options from surface, average vertex position, right mouse button click, and also the initial brush point. Allow me to read the tooltip. This value determines radius where the average normal to the surface will be calculated. Higher values mean averaging normals over larger area, yet slower and fluid normal change over the surface. Lower values lead to a more strict following of the surface curvature. So we don't want that. I picked initial brush position because that's going to be the initial cutting point and it's not going to really deviate from that. Whereas the average vertex position will change along the brush stroke. That effectively means that it will follow the larger contours as you progress along your stroke, but it will polish or trim the smaller deviations in the surface. Let's try the flatten brush. I'm going to use tangent smoothing or relax to fix any self intersections that I see. The flatten brush has an additional relax modifier added to it. And for experimentation's sake, I added the soft flatten modifier also. But once more, you can adjust the settings. Let's turn relax on. Okay, and now we can also adjust plane offset as well. So the plane offset is essentially where the center of your brush is in relation to the surface. Currently, the minimum plane offset is negative 12. That means with minimal pressure, its center is actually beneath the surface, but with maximum pressure, it's somewhat above the surface at 24%. I'll adjust the minimum offset downward a bit. Currently, as of this recording, I believe the flattened brush is probably the closest equivalent to the H Polish brush. But now I'm going to try a third party preset from a forum contributor, Lee Bamforth. It was built from scratch from a base brush, which allows you to create your own custom brushes from scratch. I will provide a link to that in the description if you want to use that. I think this is even closer to the H Polish brush than the default flattened brush in 3D Coat. You can see the settings if you want to use that instead of having to download the brush, whichever you think is quicker. You can see the settings. I have a flatten modifier, a relax modifier. 
And if you want to create different variants, you can save them as a custom brush. One way to do that is if you're building it off of an existing default brush, you can simply right click and choose to duplicate it. And it will give you the opportunity to name it once you do that. And then it stores the settings that you use last. So if you modify your settings on a given brush, it's going to remain. It's three coats going to remember that. So you may want to store a preset. Also, you would do that by making the adjustments you want to all the parameters, choose the different brush alphas you want to use, draw modes and whatnot. And when you're ready, you can click here in the upper right corner of the presets panel and choose add preset. Later down the road, if you want to update that with some changes, you can just select your preset, make the adjustments that you want to update it to, and then right click on the preset itself and choose to update preset. And just remember if the default brushes do not suit your needs, then feel free to build one from scratch using a base brush or you could build off of a currently existing surface brush. You can add additional modifiers to the brush if you so choose. And that's going to conclude this quick look at the equivalent of the H-Polish brush in 3D Coat. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.